G'day folks, welcome to Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures from a one million acre cattle station called Alquestro. Now that's situated in the Kimberley, which is in northern Western Australia. Now I was lucky enough to have a look at this joint around about three or four years ago. And boy, has she kicked on since those days. But first up, let me take you on a guided tour of Alquestro to see what's on offer. El Questro is on the eastern perimeter of the Kimberley and runs for approximately 80 kilometres into the heart of the region. It offers five types of accommodation, something to suit everyone's taste and more importantly, pocket. Now if you're looking for luxury in the outback, uh, yibbity yibbity folks, this is it. The homestead is an exclusive retreat built over the magnificent Chamberlain River and it's home to some pretty big crocs. So if you want to go for a swim around here, folks, uh, might I suggest you use the swimming pool? The air-conditioned rooms all have their own private bathrooms and verandas. And they also have fantastic views of the gardens and river. If nature's your thing, then Emma Gorge is for you. Tented cabins are hidden within El Questro's Coburn Range. Emma Gorge Resort has a large swimming pool surrounded by native trees and it boasts one of the best restaurants in the Kimberley. If you just want to go it alone and rough it a bit, then you can camp by one of the many river sites. But first we take to the skies in search of the mighty Barramundi. The uniqueness of this place is its remoteness, it's wild, it's untamed. And there's no room for Nissan patrols because there ain't no roads. There's these things, the old choppers. Whirly bird fishing, all part of the service at Old West Road. Wagons, ho! The chopper allows you access to some very special fishing spots, and half the fun, folks, is just getting there. The scenery from the air is just breathtaking. My guide today is none other than the owner of this huge property, Will Burrell. And he's brought me to one of his favourite spots on the Chamberlain River, Explosion Gorge. This is just a beautiful time of the night, isn't it? You ever get sick of it up here, Will? I haven't yet, Rex. I'll let you know if I ever do. Oh, good cast, Will. Got to get right in there. It's a very fishy looking spot, yeah. isn't it? And look. Oh, gee, something just took that right at the boat. You're kidding. Oh. Oh, you know what this could be. There's no splash, there's no. Uh uh. They're good eating. Uh, They're good uh, eating. Uh, uh. A fork tailed catfish. Have a look at that. Oh, my. Well, that's a start. Will. Oh, it's not a bad size. You go two pounds. You get a nice fillet off either side of that. And then you've got the third fillet, the belly fillet. Oh, yeah. And that tastes uh, as much uh, as close to crocodile as I know. Well, if ever that... you and Celia take a belly fillet off me, mate, you could feed the whole lot of them here. The, the station, the Emmet Gorge and everything. Oh. I tell you what, I'll let you go, mate. I've got the old uh, barbless hooks there. A lot of catfish in the system? There are a lot of catfish. Yeah. They get very big too. They put up quite a battle. Yeah. And uh, they're quite exciting to catch on the fly. Well, they'll uh, they'll take most most things really, caddies. He took that Nils master like there was no tomorrow. So we might just sort of see if he'll go off with those barbless hooks that I've honed down. Off you go, mate. 
Oh, mate. Yeah? He's talking to you, Rex. No, he said, that's Will Burrow. <laughs> he said, who's that big bloke with the beard? Yes, mate. There you go. You got him. So no kiss for him, mate. I think it might be another caddy, mate. I tell you what, I, I reckon it... you've brought me to Will's famous catfish hole. <laughs> I think maybe. Oh, gee whiz. It's looking that way a bit, isn't it? They're worried. I think we're getting called because it's uh, getting a little bit late in the day, folks. I and think, the last I think, troll. I think that's the chopper pilot trying to say, <laughs> let's go home. Have a look at this for a catfish, oh, folks. Oh, beautiful. So today, our first day at Alquistro has been catfish day. And the helicopter pilots are getting a little bit uh, hungry. And we've had a good day on Explosion Gorge. Tomorrow's another day at Alquistro in some of the most beautiful country in Australia and the world. It's our country and we should be proud of it. And I tell you what, I know I'm not going there, but if heaven's anything like this, I wish. Bad terrain here, Will. Uh, it's a little bit pebbly, isn't it? You want to get the grader out of here, mate, or get your money back if he's been through. <laughs> yeah. Well, should we have a flick in here, Rex? What do you think? Nice looking deep bit of water. Yeah, no, that'll be good. Some good shelter across the other side there too, Will. Yeah, we'll get him right in under those pandanas, I think. Thank you very much. Is this all part of the Elquestro estate? Yep, it, it is. Uh, there are four rivers on Elquestro, and uh, this, is, this is the Chamberlain, it's one of them. So the man who actually fishes the river owns the river? Some of the time, yeah. I uh, enjoy to get the line wet. Isn't this amazing? Now, apart from heli fishing, say if a guy wanted to do it in a tent on a budget, can he sort of fish some nice pristine water like this? Yeah, absolutely. No, we've. Uh, We've pushed roads in with bulldozers into a number of these waterways that were otherwise uh, absolutely inaccessible. And uh, a lot of them have got little tin dinghies in there, which we uh, rent out for sort of half a day or a day or whatever. And uh, yeah, we make sure that there are only sort of one, one group of people fishing in each waterhole. So you still feel the, the Kimberley and the isolation, because that's what it's all about up here, really. Are you sure, Will? Yep, good fish, good fish. Very nice fish, very nice fish. Are you sure, he's, Will? He's got a nice dark. Back on him, look at him, look at him dance. He's dancing for us, Rex. Well, he's oh. dancing back where I come from. He goes, oh, oh, look up as well! <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's just going off. <laughs> Will, Will, settle down. We don't want a heart attack victim here. Oh. Now, that was incredible, folks, because I had that lure out. I was just watching Will catch a fish, and I've got a caddy. So, very nice oh, fish, Will. Look at that for nice, a beautiful barramundi. Nice little comfort left there. Well, I'm going in the water. Fantastic. That's not a bad bar. You can see the way he's sucked that spearhead right down his gob. I'm just going to try and get it out of his gob now. I do get overexcited, I'm sorry. I love my fishing. I really do. God, he's, he's sucked the other one right down. Gonna have to really get into it now. We got a problem here. We're gonna have to do a bit of surgery. You can see we're using barbless hooks, which makes it easy to get them out, but this poor fellow. Yeah, I got him, got him, got him, got him. Okay, where you good? Where you fella? Away you good. Ah, beautifully done, Will. It's lovely to see him go back to uh, leave them for me next time I come up here. Well, folks, the old catfish there. Catfish Rex, they call me. Don't you go biting me on the leg. But isn't that just magnificent? Over the top of that hill, as far as the eye can see, about 100 kilometres to the next range. 
It's wild, it's beautiful, it's Australia. And Will, I'm sure that if you don't get excited, the producer will tell you, you're hooked up again! <laughs> I'm afraid so, Rex. It's uh, another little catfish there, I think. Another little catfish. I thought it was a barra the way you took it as well. Well, I'm glad it wasn't a barra, because we don't have a sound recordist anymore. You blew him over the top of that reef. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite exciting. He's being chased by other people down there as well. He's been chased by other people, is he? Fish are people, I think. Fish have souls. Well, he's not bad, is he? Hey, Will. Will. Oh! What is it? It's a catfish, Will. No, it isn't. It's a catfish, Will. Well, you had a better look than I did. No, I didn't see it, Will. I just know what has happened. You're, to you're absolute, your rod. absolutely right. It is another catfish. He does get excited, this chap, doesn't he? And I tell you what, it's just magnificent to be able to, well, experience flying to some remote area that possibly no one's ever been before and be as close to nature as what we've been today. It's been a real privilege for me. And after the break, Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures continues in the Kimberley in the top end of Australia. Folks, welcome to the El Questro Barra Fest. Now, this is quite a unique competition in the fact that you've got to get out, catch a fish, and get it back to the headquarters in the least possible time to gain maximum points. It's also unique in the fact that they've got the barbless hook rules, and they do encourage kiss, catch, and release of the barramundi. Now, like its neighbouring barramundi classic, this is going to become a must for barramundi competition anglers throughout the calendar year. Now I'm going to go up later on in the station helicopter and having a look at the invitation list, we're going to drop in on a few familiar faces. When you're ready to start, put your uh, stamp, there. stamp there. That means you can leave the property, then head off on your fish. Um, then you got once you're out there fishing, you uh, get your fish that you want to bring back. Yes. Okay. And you get another stamp. Okay, 100 points per pound. Right. And then we also give you a point for every minute. At your back prior so to the finish time. So it's important to come back as quick as you can. And there is a bit of displacement here. Now, with this little lure and these barbless hooks, I cannot give this fish any slack. So I've got to rely. Oh, he's a big barra, Mundy. He is a big barra, this bloke. He's a. <laughs> I tell you what, folks. I gotta get a better job. I gotta get something I'm enjoying. This is just too much like hard work. This fish is a beautiful fish that has been landlocked. Now, oh, he doesn't like me at all. He's coming along this rock ledge. Now, I've been snagged here a couple of times, and what I've got now is the rod's not loaded up anywhere near its capacity. The six kilo line is singing a little bit, but if he wants to go, I've got enough drag for him to be able to say, well, I'm going to take a bit, Rexy. So everything's in order. There is no reason that I should make a mistake here. The only reason we should lose this fish, if we're going to lose it, is if he's good enough to get out. Have a look at that. Well, I'm going to have a guess at about seven kilo. I've caught a lot of fish. I'm going to have a guess at about eight kilo, so about 17 or 18 pound in the old scale. And she is just a magnificent fish. I'm going to give her the kiss of life, folks. And there it is, the zinc cream on the end. And what I'm going to do 
is I'll give you a bit of a look at her. Have a look at it. The gleaming, sparkling, shimmering side of an Australian fish that we should be proud of. Now, if you can just hang on a minute, darling, I'll get that hook out of you. She's got one underneath her, so no wonder I can't get it out of you. OK, I know, I know, I know. And I know you're going to be proud to be on the Rex Hunt show because we're proud of you. There you go now. Now, I want you to swim away because you're what this game is all about. G'day, boys. G'day, Rex. How you going? Uh, Tough chopper ride, boys. Uh, 12 minutes. Shocking. <laughs> it took us an hour and a half in the car. Don't get up, Will. Look, I've told you not to stand up. You don't have to stand up and be oh. a fisher when I'm down here on the bank of my property. <laughs> Did a good job of that at, Will. Have a look at it. Isn't that fantastic? How'd you go, mate? Good. I got a nice one. Have a look at this. Oh, who'd you buy that off? <laughs> what do you reckon it weighs? Oh, it'd be 20 pound. Good 20 pound, I'd say. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. You want to go uh, and have a little bit of a guess? Yeah, all right. You got Because I got the old eh? lie detector here, mate. Got him on a live mullet about um, 45 minutes ago. So, I think 19's my biggest to date. So Is that the best place? Goes, I think it'll hold, yeah. What'd you say? Oh, 20. 9.3 kg. Just over the 20. A poof dinth within 21, mate. The lie yeah. detector, you can't beat that. Nah. Have a look at the size of the mouth. What'd you, yeah. What lure'd you get him on? No, a live mullet. Live mullet? Yeah. See, I tell you what, there's not a lot of water here. No, it's dropped several metres since we've been here. Uh, the tide's been going out and it's just reached slack water at the moment. There seems to be a few fish around, so... He's a fresh fish. Uh, how oh. long ago did you get him? Yeah, only about three quarters of an hour ago. And look, how, look at the colour of him. He's come straight up from the salt water. Beautiful fish. Yeah, oh, he's really hiking. I'd say it's a barra. I'll hit him in a second. Yes! Yep, I'm on. Oh, yeah, there he is. It's a barra. Did you read paragraph two of that contract? <laughs> what did that say? That said, thou shalt not catch fish when the bearded burbler was in 20 miles of you. <laughs> Unbelievable, mate. Have a look at that. Slide him in. Yeah, I'm going to do the honest for me. Look at that. You can fish. see the, the live, uh, well, he's not live anymore, that mullet. It's a, yeah. a Popeye mullet that I was using for bait. Just goes to show, it's not a real big barrow, but he'll still take a, uh, a live bait. Yeah. The mullet is not 100%, mate. Now, no. I, I'll tell you this. No, he's um, pretty well far gone, hasn't he? The mullet is not 100%. Are you all right? Yeah, Rex, I'm all right. Oh, he's all right. <laughs> Kiss him and put him back. Kiss him and put him back. One of Will's pets. There you are. Great stuff. Well done, son. Thank you very much. Let's review that contract. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> this week we're going to show you a simple knot to make sure that your fly or lure swims freely. It's called a Homer Road Knot and it's very useful in nearly any fishing situation where you're using flies or lures. First you just tie a simple granny knot in your leader once through, then you feed the end through the loop in your fly or lure, then you come back through the hole you've made in the granny Tighten that up a little bit, snug that up. Then the next way to finish is very simple. You just do a little loop around there and make another granny incorporating your main line. Snug that up tight, pull both knots together, snip it off with your little nippers, which you've always got around your neck. And that makes a very nice little loop that will not tighten up when you hook a fish. And your fly or lure can swim very freely. It makes all the difference. A fish will swim up behind that, notice it's swimming freely, much more likely to hit it than it is to just peel off and run away because the thing is very stiff. So remember that one, it's called the Homer Road Knot and it's great for tying any fly or lure to a heavy, stiff leader. Folks, there's nothing better than in a beautiful mountain stream in the Australian Alps with a good friend of mine, Steve Starling. A lot of you people know Steve through his writings and been with Rex Hunt on the tally before. Steve, but you just don't come in here like a big herd of buffaloes and catch fish. There's a certain style, there's a certain technique to take a trout out of a mountain stream. There is, mate, and you've, as you say, you've got to sneak up on them. It's hunting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. 
Uh, I'm going to try this little salter. I've explained before, folks, that the revolving blade lure is a great lure because in six or seven inches of water, you know, the old revolving blade can just cause some turbulence. I'm sure it causes vibration. And Steve, even on your aquarium at home, on the side of your aquarium, you can see when you knock and tap, tap and say like, hey, 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 the fish are inquisitive and the trout are no different. That's right. Well, you try the salter. I'm yeah. going to try this little rapala. Nice little bait fish action. Yeah. And uh, this might work better in the slightly deeper runs. So we'll cover the water really well. You can fish the shallows and I'll fish the deeper runs. That one's interesting, folks, because if that's not a rainbow trout, it's the closest thing I've seen to it. So a lot of our people wouldn't know that rainbow and brown trout are cannibalistic. And apart from that, folks, they eat each other. <laughs> they sure do. And they're going to think that's a little one-year-old or a couple of month old rainbow trout fingerling. And the big fella's going to come over and go, gotcha. This looks good, mate. Yeah, it looks very, very good, mate. Yeah, well, they can't be anywhere else. Not out where the trees are. Huh? Into that run up there. Isn't the anticipation something when you come to a new run like this and you put a lure in it for the first yeah, time? Look I, look, I think that's what fishing's all about, is the anticipation of not knowing when it's going to happen. There we go. And I got Double one too. Up. How about that? <laughs> I got one <laughs> too. <laughs> Little rainbows, oh, are they? Oh, yes. But aren't they full of fight? <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, there you go. We certainly picked the right spot yeah, here. isn't that magnificent? Uh. Have a look at this. Like peas in a Mine's a, a little brown. brown. We've got a brown yeah. and a rainbow. Well, Just... let's walk over and show the folk the difference yeah. between a brown and a rainbow, because I suppose a few people wouldn't know. First of all, the rainbow trout. Steve Starling, <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> this is good stuff. Yeah, isn't it? The rainbow trout, the best way to pick him is the crimson slash down the side, but it's not always apparent. So the other thing you look at is the spots on the tail, and there's always lots of little spots, both top and bottom of the tail. No spots on the tail with the brownie. And, of course, an array of different coloured spots. An array of different coloured spots. A golden body with a white underneath tummy. And Bob's your uncle, mate. I'm <laughs> making a bit of a botch of this, but I might just sort of make sure this bloke swims again. He doesn't want to play, does he? No. Look, doesn't that show how much that little lure looks like a little rainbow trout? Yeah. And it looks like a rainbow trout, mate, but you tell me, what was that, uh, what was that comment then about looking like a rainbow trout? What does that lure of mine look like? <laughs> <laughs> hey, isn't that incredible? It's like a bowl of baked beans, yeah, actually, with incredible. the spots on there. No, it's good. I might be able to just get this little hook out here. There we go. Okay, mate, ladies first, off you go. That's not you being a lady, but you're <laughs> rainbow lady first. Yeah. Okay. Just turn his head into the current. Yeah. Or her head into the current, whatever it might be. Sometimes it takes a little while just for them to get their breath yeah. back after being caught. But yours looks ready to go. Yeah, mine's ready. Yeah, there they look, go. Off you go. Off you go, mate. Oh, yeah. Look They're at fine. the pair of them. They're right. Come on, off you go. You know, just getting serious for a moment, Steve, I just hope that your son Tom and my son Matthew can bring their sons here in 20 or 30 years' time. We have some work to do, and I think the best thing to do is to jump on those idiots that are rubbishing Australia and doing the wrong thing. We've got to make it an outlaw, the situation of littering, leaving the farmers' gates open, not getting permission. Ethical trout fishing is the future of this country. It is, and then our kids and their kids can enjoy it. I've finished making kids, folks, but I'm looking forward to a grandson because I'm going to bring him up here. Well, come on, two big kids. We'll go and catch some more fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Next week on Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures, folks, I catch up with the bloke you just saw, my old mate Bushy, and he goes to any lengths to catch trout in Lake Jindabyne. And Steve Starling discovers the dangers of the deep at Ocean World in Manly at Sydney Harbour. Well, that's just about a wrap from El Questro Station, folks. And I hope you agree with me that it's a special part of our wonderful country. Until next week, somewhere in the wonderful world of fishing, I'm Rex Hunt, and goodbye for now.